stagnation welcome back to the channel champions in today's episode s okay episode s episode right episode thing i'm trying to come up with a new word a pre -pre. deriving it from the word episode uh just like some people want to come up with a new sense of value despite claiming that they are the uh what would you call them the experts the financial experts if you will <clears throat> you know i have to say vanguard and some of these other people your financial expertise these days is as good as um an influencer on public you know <laughs> it went for public yeah uh, you know <laughs> public is an interesting place I think when you look at sheep mentality, where a bunch of people just group and follow the same concept, it's not everyone on the platform. Don't feel the need to come at me. But if you feel the need to come at me, then check your foot. The shoe might be fitting. Click the like button and follow us. Yeah. And then shoot at us. Yeah, yes. First of all, <laughs> like the button. Because if you if you give a comment without clicking the like button, we'll ignore you. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just simple as that. It means that before you engage us you're trying to take without giving and we don't want people who are only taking because if you're only taking then you will see that you are the same thing as the federal reserve or some of these rent seekers out here <laughs> uh, vanguard they are not providing any value but they're ready to take from you in fees and fees and fees and then control you by keeping the value of your asset down but let's stick to the situation at hand here vanguard ceo tim buckley this post is from the Bitcoin therapist and he's talking, uh, he's uh, sharing here on why he believes that Bitcoin should not be in his client's portfolio. He says he has no intrinsic value. Does the dollar have intrinsic value? <laughs> uh, he says there is no cash flow. When we look at the cash flow of the dollar, it seems like negative cash flow. Because when we look at f innovation flights, when we look at the amount of money that, I mean, <laughs> when you say there's no cash flow, let me just, let me just simplify it. How is the market cap of Bitcoin looking? It's, uh, slowly creeping up. Slowly creeping up. It is creeping up massively, I will say. I think it's the number one, six, number six uh, biggest market cap at this point in time. Yeah, it's currently below um, meta, meta, uh, meta at the moment. You cannot get there if there is no cash flow. Yep, and it's also overtaken that Tesla. Long-term potential. No long-term potential, he says. I think that if you look at from when Bitcoin started, over that long-term period of 15 years to now, I think it's speaking for itself as to the potential. And that potential is up. We started at 25 cents. Or less, actually. Yep. And this man says no long-term potential. What does it take to recognize that something has that potential? When you look at the assets that Vanguard is holding in its management portfolios, and you look at the performance compared to Bitcoin, you see that Bitcoin is clearly outperforming all of them. So what are the criteria that they use to determine long-term potential? All right, we'll dig into it. We're just reading the post there. We'll watch the video here <laughs> and then we'll come back and talk about it. So yeah, this is what he had to say about this. Power of ETFs. Uh, and there's been a lot of discussion yes. over the past few weeks about uh, potentially a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency ETFs. Are you exploring it? Do you plan to open one? Are you going to apply to open one? And what do you think of a Bitcoin ETF as an investment tool for your customers? Tyler, we won't be pursuing a Bitcoin ETF. Um, it, just like we don't uh, use gold as an asset class for our clients. So we have, it's not that people can't invest in there. We just look at asset classes or, you know, what belongs in a long-term portfolio, what has intrinsic value, has cash flows to it. And those are the asset classes we steer people towards. And so we don't go towards Bitcoin or gold or, or any other of those uh, stable assets. They don't go towards Bitcoin or gold or any of those other stable, stable, mark that word, stable 
assets. That's what he said, right? Mm. Let me pull that back up just to make sure I do not hear something else. Of those uh, stable assets. Stable assets is what he called it. Green or gold or, or any other of those uh, stable assets. All right, double up. <laughs> I'm still laughing. There is so much to talk about mm. about this. So first, uh, if you saw the topic of that video, the conversations talk, talked about the 60-40 Mm -hmm. And we've made several videos about sixty forty is dead. Sixty forty portfolio is dead. Right. You know, sixty percent stocks. Right. You know, aggressive stocks, whatever you want. And then the rest of them is bonds and mutual funds, right? Mm -hmm. And now, if you think about that sixty forty rule, right, you have to understand that portfolio designs do change over time. Sixty forty is actually recent. Yeah. And what a sixty forty portfolio does is actually make them as the organization richer. Because mm -hmm. what a 60 40 portfolio does for you as an investor is that 60%, yes, is invested into stocks, which in some cases you can say, yes, they have intrinsic value. But a lot of it are parabolic or uh, expanded or fake value. You know, you can say for, for the longest, right, um, Airbnb was not profitable, Uber was not profitable, but the value of the stock was going up because mm -hmm. somebody was prepping it up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the intrinsic value of a debt, a uh, debt-based system or debt-based assets really is zero. But for some reason, Americans have been made to believe that it has value and people trade it. A lot of the stocks on the market, especially during the last re current recession that we have right now, mm -hmm. a lot of them are literally zip, nothing. They're only floating on investors' debt. And those debt are also money printed out of tin here by the federal government with 0% loans, right? So just yes. think about that. That 60 that you already have in your so-called 6040 is fake money. And funny enough, if you do some research into those stocks that you think you own inside their portfolio, you actually don't own it. There's another organization that actually owns your stock. That is why when these companies crash, those companies take their assets first before you even get a chance to get your stocks. Mm-hmm. How many times have you seen exchanges to get destroyed and you don't have access to your assets? You don't own those actual 60, 40. They own it, and that 40, that mutual fund and those bonds, is what they use to keep the American economy afloat because America forces you to go buy a 10-year bond or a 5-year bond or you buy a mutual fund, right? And they promise you to give, uh, give you a certain percentage where they go and blast that money away and get to print more of that money mm -hmm. and then loan it back to you at a certain stable, that's what they call stable, stable interest rates. Yeah. That's what the rest of that 40 does. So people do not realize that that 60 40 is just to keep you in the system, maintain you for as long as possible so that you can sustain through when you're almost dead and retired and now they will now give you back. Whereas they've made trillions of dollars with that money that entire 30, 40 years of your career and they say they give you dividends, a very, very low percentage of your so-called value that you've stored with them hmm. and they give you a little sprinkle and you feel very happy about it. Whereas they've made trillions over your money that you cannot touch for 30, 40, 45 years. That's the 60, 40. Now let's talk about intrinsic value. One moment before you carry on there. So what you're saying then is these people have set up packages or these images of things that make you perceive this idea of achieving wealth but realistically what they want you to do is to stay right where you are At least because it is beneficial to them it's always beneficial to them i'll break it down again mm. the intrinsic value of majority of the stocks that you see in the market majority of the stock mm. is inflated by the market makers so things like stock buybacks as well Oh, that's where they get this, they get these returns and they use it to buy back their own stocks, which holds up the price of that stock. Then, yeah? mm. that's just another old world of itself. Mm. By the way, where do those stocks come from? How do the companies get to create those stocks out of tin here? How where do the value of those stocks come from? How come you can continuously buy stocks to no end? Because the company is growing, apparently. But why is it grow? What is it growing with? Is it growing with actual cash yeah. flow? from yeah. customers money or is it going from debt based growth because we've taken out more debt now now the company is bigger yeah 
these are things that uh, everyone needs to think about. But Karen, you had another point there. There's a lot of points here, and this is what a lot of people are not saying, is that Vanguard benefit extremely from you giving them your store of value. Like, just think about it. You work really hard for your money, mm. but you are so scared of the economy, you need to find somewhere to put that money mm-hmm. so that in the future when you need it, it's still there or it has more value. Yeah, That is why people go to fund managers. That's why people go to exchanges to now put that energy that they've worked on and store it with that company. That is why you look for stocks. That is why you look for mutual funds, right? So they're trying to invest. Of course, that is what investment is. Which is a concept that makes sense. You want to plant seeds so you can harvest in the future. Correct. But then it seems people like Vanguard now have placed themselves in the position of where you're going to be investing your money. Mm. And instead of investing your money and letting the market decide that growth into the future for you to harvest, they have inserted themselves. So when you invest, they control the growth of that investment, say 401k, and then when you get to a certain point, they can also control how much you will get back in return. Meanwhile, they are benefiting from all of these investments which you've put in there right now. Not when they turn 65, which is why they're able to drive around in freaking, you know, because luxury yet. machines yep. and sell in luxury yachts and fly yep. in private jets while you are clocking in and clocking out and clocking in and clocking out for 65 years of your life. Is it? Well, whenever you start working, right? Yep. So let's say at least 40 years of your life. Most people start working at 14 years old. Right? So... So yeah. 14 to 65, 67 now. 67, right? For so our generation. It's 67 now? Yeah, for our yeah. generation. They moved it up two years. By the time we get to that retirement age, I have a feeling that it will no longer be 67. They will have to push it up again. Are you even considering inflation and the debt of the dollar yeah. over that period? Yeah, they must push it up. I mean, they've already said Social Security is expired, right? But um, people keep participating in the system. So why are we participating in a scam for? Uh, we uh, must all consider ourselves degens if we are participating in a scam. Even, you know, those who like to look at themselves as holier than thou, some of the Bitcoin maxis and such. I would expect you guys to be 100% of the system by now, but you cannot be because of the way it's trapping all of us, mm-hmm. right? I'm one of those. Yeah, so it's just, it's just what it is. We have to use the fiat system as it is right now, but I think that we must be intentional. We must be aware of the direction that we are trying to move in as a society people have always decided what money is this is not about violence this is not about warfare this is just about your right ability to store your own value exactly i'll give you a good example real quick if you allow me you're a farmer right you have land you have the seed you've worked hard you have now seeds would you rather plant the seed and you don't even have to be i think every human being has Mm -hmm. it in them the, the tools to be a farmer. Yeah. Put it in the soil, pour water on it, maintain it. But no, I don't want to plant the corns myself. I want to give it to you to go do whatever and just give me whatever interest. Mm. Zero control over it. As a matter of fact, you cannot pull it out. You cannot exit that that yeah. that agreement. Yeah. They tell you when to exit, when to get your, your, your harvest back and how much you can harvest. If you want to take your harvest out of your... Imagine it's yours. Yeah. You, you, they charge you a fee, you pay taxes and everything. Whereas the entire time, it's your land, it's your farm. You could have done it all by yourself without going to pay somebody else for the maintenance and the fees and all the the rules that they put on you yeah. for that. And that is what's going on with Vanguard. And they do not want you to be free from that grab and that hold because that's yeah. what Bitcoin does. Exactly. I mean, look at them now. They're deciding for you whether you have access to invest in an asset that is supposed to make you financially free in their fair terms as they say let me add to that so you're the farmer oh man beans is now the biggest thing Mm -hmm. can you plant beans in my farm over there because beans is the is the answer no 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 no. you cannot plant beans you can't plant beans right now we're all sticking with rice yeah yeah you're gonna miss this bean season yeah you're going to miss all the gains all the profits that you could make from the harvesting season of beans that will come by yep it's insane folks it's time to wake up yep I know a lot of times people like to say to themselves that they cannot um, 
you know uh, we're busy we're gonna look into bitcoin and so on and so forth yeah it's by design this is what you should be experiencing that's how it's supposed to be mm -hmm. uh, and people say oh i haven't looked into bitcoin yet and they say i'm busy i'm busy but but you look into this video <laughs> and you listen to him right and and it's and the crazy thing is not the first time you've heard it either and people will say they're busy and busy i'll tell you what there's not going to be a point in time in your life where that business is going to pull back to the point where you feel like you can now go and sit down and just watch Bitcoin because at a point where you happen to not be busy, okay, uh, you're going to be doing something else that you find to be interesting or exciting. You could literally just be sitting there watching a Netflix movie. But time is going by. Mm. Comfort zone. Yeah. No one is that busy. No one is that busy. I don't care who you are. No one is just that busy. If you feel like you're that busy, then please understand that maybe that is by design because it is impossible. If you have to be that busy for things to keep going, I want you to consider the fact that it is possible that everything else that is keeping you busy needs you, not the other way around. Boom. But okay. You talked about cash flow. Yeah. That's the part that I... I <laughs> it is lies. It is straight up lies, okay? At this point in time, we're in a place where the SEC, the the executive branch, the banks, are just all outright lying to the people. And when people get to a point where they're able to just blatantly lie to you, you have to seriously consider the fact that something else is going on that they don't want you to know. I'll give you an example, and then we'll wrap up this video because I want it to be too long. When I came to this country, America was seen as this place, at least the way America is portrayed back in Africa. I was like, man, it's going to be an amazing place. It's going to be spectacular. They make it seem like you're heading to Disneyland where the people here are just of a higher vibration, different class, different operational mindset. They make it seem like they are superior. Then I finally show up here to this country and I learn about the hood. That is where we were living. <laughs> so you learned about the hood. I learned about the hood. Okay. And I'll tell you this. I've been to some hoods in America. I would rather live in a tree like you guys like to claim. Okay? I would rather sleep on a tree branch. In Africa. In Africa. With a snake on the other side of the tree and a lion on the ground waiting for me. <laughs> than to go hang out in these neighborhoods. Okay? Because this neighborhood is existing in what is supposed to be the leading nation. It is a disappointment. It is sad. I know people don't ever want to speak negatively. Of their environment but you know what if you cannot address the issues head on you only want to put them under the blankets and put them under the you know what mm -hmm. is it called the bed and stuff like that mm -hmm. it is going to come crumbling one day it's just what it is so if you love yourself if you love your country if you love your financial sovereignty you must accept what is happening to you and you must embrace it now back to my point about these people lying you can clearly see that they make the country look different outside and inside the country they make it seem like everything out there is horrible for example when i came in people are calling me african buddhist scratcher people are saying we live in a tree people are literally thinking that Walking i am the kid, a primitive come. human being yep. right but this is how in america they portray other places so people cannot go that was also a lie mm -hmm. They're doing that to you Americans right? in America too. <laughs> exactly. That was also a lie. And so right now, we can see that they're very, uh, very much lying from every angle. And their actions are not matching it. But why is it that you want to just keep carrying on with your life and thinking that everything is going to be okay? Convenience. They've just been made yeah. to be comfortable with living in debt. And they then use that to control them. And that is why we say, what you're experiencing, this is what they want you to experience. Like you said, no beans for you this season, right? And we're looking at it right there in our eyes. Any final thoughts before we wrap this one up, sir? Yeah, that cash flow comment. They are giving you crumbs of the bread. Yeah. Literally, the funds, the amount of money they make with your money in those funds. And they say they're giving you dividends. Mm. Dividends of what, 3% of the profits? Yeah. Think about it. Oh, I want to build a dividends portfolio. I've tried building a dividends portfolio. And yes, it gives you money. But man, 
there's better potentials out there than a, the, than the stock that the value is going down mm. while while they're giving you dividends. I mean, look, I, I I always I keep using this line, man. They're rolling around in private yachts. You're driving a Honda Accord. Yet you're the one paying them. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, if if that is not if that is not evident enough, I don't know what else is. So it's crazy. People need to pay more attention to the uh, financial system because when you think about your money in the exchanges yeah. and you start realizing that those monies actually they've built institutions that now actually own that money mm. and you only just have a contract that says you own the money but the money isn't yours even though it's your money your minds will get blown away. Exactly. I have to remember the name of the company. I'm running the blank on it right now. Okay. Well... Speaking of things that you should not be running a blank on, okay, it's like liking this button, the like button, hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, okay, please do not forget to do that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are also on X, you can find us there at Stack, and of course Spotify at Stack. Until next time, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will see you on the next one, praise and out. <laughs>